Hey, keto friends. It's finally cooled off enough for me to cook in the house, so I made these little beef kebabs in the air fryer. One pound of ground beef, one tablespoon of oil. That'll help bind all the seasoning. Two teaspoons of garlic, half a teaspoon of cumin and cayenne, salt and pepper to taste, one teaspoon of paprika. Here's your special seasoning, about a quarter teaspoon of nutmeg, and yes, parsley, about two tablespoons. I'll add all of that to the comment section. Mix up your um, ingredients really well, and then start shaping your little kebabs. Pop them in the air fryer at 470, no, th sorry, 370 for 10 minutes. And they come out so good, so juicy. They're like little nuggets, little kebabs. You don't need the sticks or anything. Um, I'm gonna show you right here. Hopefully you can see how juicy they are. And you definitely wanna make a sauce on the side. I didn't have any, I didn't have time to make a sauce, but I used sour cream, so good. Go get it. I don't ever wanna hear somebody say fat-free cheese doesn't taste good after this. Let's go, two cups of water, protein pasta, boil for seven minutes and put it off to the side. Half cup almond milk, add fat-free cream cheese when it starts steaming, reduce that, add your fat-free cheese, and mix everything together. Add hot sauce if you're feeling spicy, and put your noodles back in. Mix it all together, and add four ounces of cooked chicken, garlic powder, and paprika on top. I have recently been drinking bone broth every single day for my joints, for my bones, and also for my gut and my skin. So if you're interested in learning how to make bone broth, let's get started. Two pounds of chicken feet, three chicken carcasses. Roast these at 400 degrees for 30 minutes. Then place it in a pot. I'm drizzling in a little bit of apple cider vinegar. Just enough water to cover the veggies and bones, herbs. Bring it to a boil and cook it on low for 10 plus hours. Strain the broth and I was able to fill up three of these 32 ounce deli cups. A batch lasts me for about a week and I store it in the fridge, but if you're storing it in the freezer, it should last about three weeks. And every day I scoop out a cup and microwave it for two minutes, put in a few pinches. Of We've got another winner, 10 out of 10. This Philly cheesesteak casserole was amazing. So screenshot this and let's get cooking together. Get your veggies ready and set them aside. Pour your mushrooms into a bowl, slice your onions into half moons, as well as those green peppers. You can use other colored peppers as well. Then in a skillet, add a little avocado oil and your sliced beef. I'm going to season it up with salt, pepper, and garlic powder and cook it until brown. Then set it aside, leaving the juices in the pan and adding our veggies. Make sure to stir them up and coat them and cook until nice and softened. Then add your cream cheese, your beef broth, your Worcestershire or however the heck you say that word and stir it all together until the cream cheese is melted. Add your beef back in and pour it into a 9 by 13 pan. Spread a little bit of shredded cheese over the top into a 350 oven for about 10 minutes until the cheese is melted. Serve it in a bowl or with your favorite veggies and salad. It was absolutely great. Tag and do at us if you make it and like and If you love nachos like I do, then you have to try these cauliflower nachos. They are so good and this is how you make it. First thing we're gonna do is we're going to cut our cauliflower into florets. Then we're going to add it to a baking sheet and drizzle with some olive oil. And then we're gonna add all of our seasonings, mix together and add to the oven. And then we're going to roast. Then we're gonna cut our cooked corn. This is the best way to cut corn. Remove our cauliflower from the oven, top with lots of cheese, tomatoes, jalapenos, and corn. And then we're gonna add it back into the oven until the cheese is melted. Then we're gonna add all of our fresh ingredients. I like avocado, green onions, sour cream, and red chili flakes. Full of recipes on my Instagram page. Let me know if you try it. Enjoy. For lunch today, I made a turkey avocado keto wrap. So let me show you how I made it. I started with one of these Parmesan folio cheese wraps that only have one gram of net carbs. I added in some of this reed avocado, and this is literally probably one of the biggest avocados I've ever seen. The lady at the farmer's market swore that they don't turn brown if you just leave them out, which ended up being a lie. Um, and then lastly, I added on some of this Trader Joe's organic arugula. And here is my beautiful wrap in all its glory. So here's my first impression of trying the wrap. And please excuse me shoving this big thing into my mouth. So here we go. Mm. So it's actually great. This is phenomenal. It took me like five minutes to make. Um, I forgot to mention I added in the pre-made balsamic vinegar at Trader Joe's Chicken. Sorry for chewing with my mouth open, but enjoy. This pesto chicken flatbread was not only easy, it was delicious.
start with two tablespoons of cream cheese, half a cup of mozzarella, and a quarter cup of Parmesan. You're gonna microwave it 10 to 15 seconds at a time until it becomes kind of doughy and a little melted, but not fully melted. Add two tablespoons of almond flour and a half a teaspoon of baking powder. Mix it until you can get it out of the bowl in one piece and be able to knead it so that you could put it between two pieces of parchment paper so it doesn't stick and push it all the way to the edges so that it's nice and flat. You're gonna bake it for about eight to 10 minutes at 350 until it's nice and brown. Look for your crust. Then add your pesto, your chicken, some mozzarella and some Parmesan and stick it back in the oven for about eight to 10 minutes until it's nice and crispy. Slice it, enjoy, and follow me for more keto. Hey guys, this is a simple keto dinner that is not boring. Start out by browning one pound of ground beef. Don't drain it. Then you're gonna add in a whole jar of this amazing sauce. Add in one teaspoon of basil, one teaspoon Italian seasoning, and then an entire head of shredded cabbage. Use tongs to get the mixture all mixed up and the cabbage entirely coated. Then you're gonna cover your pan almost all the way and let it simmer for about seven to eight minutes. You will not miss the noodles. I'm gonna top this with some Parmesan cheese and some crushed red pepper and this tastes just like spaghetti dinner. You will not. If you don't like broccoli, you're gonna like it now, I promise. Caesar dressing with everything bagel, roasted, the best. In a bowl, mix olive oil, salt, pepper with duck broccoli, put it in an air fryer at 400 degrees for 10 minutes. Now we're gonna make the dressing. One minced garlic, Worcestershire sauce, anchovy paste, mustard, lemon juice, some olive oil, give that a good mix, add that mayo, give it a good mix again, some Parmesan cheese, take it out of the air fryer, look at that, drizzle all on top, and finish with everything bagel seasoning. This low carb pizza roll skillet with creamy garlic dip is one you're definitely gonna wanna make. Let me show you how to do it. Start out by grabbing some fresh basil. You just wanna roll it tightly and run your knife through it like that and then back across to get it as finely diced as possible. Mince three cloves garlic. You're just gonna add that to a bowl that has three ounces of cream cheese, a third a cup of sour cream to it. Then you wanna add some salt, pepper, and Parmesan. Mix that well and set it aside. Grab your cut to garb flatbreads and work in with one sheet at a time. You just wanna spoon on a thin layer of marinara, then some mozzarella cheese, whatever pizza toppings you like, I'm just using pepperoni. Roll that up tightly and cut into eight even pinwheels. In a greased dish, you just wanna place the pinwheels along the perimeter and then add your dip into the center. Sprinkle on a little mozzarella and bake this at 400 degrees for 20 minutes. Once it comes out of the oven, sprinkle on a little Parmesan, some more fresh basil, a little red pepper flake, and you are ready to enjoy. I can tell by your comment you've been doing the same boring thing with chicken breast for a long time. Today I'm going to show you an unforgettable way to cook chicken. Now let's go! Just rough chop some garlic, put a little coarse salt in there, and some chili flake, and a little Gilbert. Pretty coarse, and hold the knife flat and just sort of push through. And do that a few times, and you should have a nice puree. Now I'm going to add to a mortar and pestle, you don't need this. And I'm going to tear some basil leaves in here. You could also just chop it in. And now we get to smashing and grinding. We'll add a little olive oil, keep mixing, and just repeat until all your olive oil in. Now, pound out your chicken breast until about three quarter inch thick. Get all that beautiful marinade on, and I really like to get in there and work it. Now, cover and marinate at least a couple hours or overnight. If you are someone who enjoys slower form content, I actually do a pretty good job teaching over on YouTube, and I have lots of amazing new videos. Also, I have 666,000 subscribers right now, and I want to just kind of blow past that to be safe. Ripping hot grill pan, or on the grill. Drop your chicken, two minutes and 20 seconds to a quarter turn. Another 220 and flip. That's what I'm talking about. 220, another quarter turn. Another 220 and rest for half as long as you cooked. Oh my God. Now a little olive oil, lemon, and finishing salt. I mean, just look at that. And I swear to you, that will be some of the best chicken you ever had. Ow! Until next time, you know I love you. I am coming at you again with another high volume, lower calorie, very nutrient dense meal. So we're gonna start right here. That is just slaw. Listen, I buy it in the bag, already pre-chopped, shredded, whatever you want to call it, and I add one teaspoon of Primal Kitchen Avocado Mayo. That's going to be about 30 calories and apple cider vinegar to taste.
I like a lot of apple cider vinegar. Then I chopped up cucumbers and onions, everything bagel seasoning and a little red wine vinegar. Lots of flavor going on right there. That makes the taste buds happy. This is one package of cold smoked Atlantic salmon. 120 calories, 18 grams of protein. Protein makes you pretty. Do not forget your protein. Then I've got berries, blackberries with a little feta. Feta is lower in lactose, so if you have a dairy intolerance, it might be a good one to try. High volume, good meal. Easy dinners for when I don't feel like cooking, but I have a family to feed, maybe part one. <laughs> this is extremely simple. I'm just gonna take a chicken breast, cut it in half, season it really well. I use salt, pepper, onion and garlic powder, paprika, Cajun seasoning, parsley, do both sides. Spray a little oil into your air fryer. Then we're gonna cook this chicken at 370 Fahrenheit for about 12 minutes. When it's halfway through, we're gonna pause and take our chicken out so that we can flip it over, then return it to the air fryer so it can continue to cook until it's no longer pink. So what am I gonna do with this chicken? Well, you can either just serve it like this, you can put it on a salad. Look at that, beautiful. I'm gonna turn it into a wrap. I have a warm extra large tortilla. I'm gonna put some lettuce, my chicken. I put Frank's wing sauce on it, red onion, ranch, and cheddar cheese. I suck at rolling these things up, but hey, I do my best. And then I didn't feel like dirtying any more dishes than I already have. So this is gonna go right back in that air fryer. Didn't even clean it, it's cool. And put it back in for just two or three minutes or until your shell is crispy. And that is 